Welcome back to the gun bench. Today we're going to be taking a look at an American Arms 12 gauge. So the American Arms Company was founded by George Fox, no relation to Ainsley Fox, none whatsoever, um, in the 1870s. George Fox was a machinist. He was mostly based out of Boston. The American Arms Company started in 1870. Uh, for those first few years, they made guns like this. These are side swings. So this is a side swing 12 gauge. I will explain and show what that means in a moment. But these guns, uh, they were part of a transitional period from like the 1870s to 1890s, where there's a lot going on with side-by-side -side shotguns. So you have hammers um, going internal, you have thumb openers, you have trigger openers, you have like the Ethan Allen trapdoor style uh, actions working on shotguns, you have the side swing, you have shotgun makers trying to figure out what works the best and what the public wants the most. So this was a failure in that regard, still a cool gun, but these were only made for about 14 years. The last few years, uh, these guns are really just being given away uh, because different actions or different styles of barrels opening really won the day. So this is just one of those transitional guns where the side-by-side -side shotgun was really trying to develop into what we know it today. So where you have a nice top lever and the barrels break. This gun does not do that. So in any case, uh, there are a bunch of variations of these. This is one of the latest iterations or variations of the side swing made by American Arms Company. It's also a grade one. So grade ones just had plain twist barrels, no engraving, nothing crazy about them. Uh, so someone must have paid for a slightly different stock or left the factory with an upcharge. A grade one should have a straight stock. This has a pistol grip. So a little bit of extra uh, money was put into this or was made a little extra at the factory, but very standard gun. The grades go up through 11. Some of the grades though, so with grade two, for instance, I think it's just 10 gauge. So you'd go from 12 gauge being at one, the exact same gun when the 10 gauge would be in grade two. So the grades aren't necessarily always, uh, in, when they increase, doesn't necessarily mean anything except a gauge change, but the really highly graded guns are beautiful and elaborate. So to actually see the side swing, what we do here, we have a thumb opener. When this presses forward, there's actually a spring actuated cylinder in here that's holding this closed. So when I push this forward, This piece is brought flush, swings out, look at that. You have a side swing. So the side swing would be loaded, put your two shells in, extractor goes in, gun then can be locked tight. Cock your hammers, fire like any other gun. So these are unique. Uh, I also said that this was a later variation. The way that we know that, I'll show you as soon as we take the barrels off. But it's a unique action. It's cool. It's fun to shoot. Just had it on the clays range and did some pattern testing with it in the last few days. But when we pull it out to here, I'm going to take this thing off so we can see it. So if you have one of these, you're like, how the heck do I open it? Pressing those extractors, pressing this button here. Keep pulling the barrels and voila, they pop off. So take a look here. If you take a look, there's a lot going on here. Let me flip the shotgun over so you can see both at the same time. You'll note that all these pieces, when they go in, they lock into place. So once you depress everything, get it into place, there's no way these barrels are going to twist off. Also, because of this, this groove that it follows down, there's not going to be any forward or backward play when you fire. Nothing's going to happen. So, how do these get on? Well, this actually hooks to the extractors here. That's why the extractors have to be closed in order to be able to actually shut when you have it open. But this extractor piece here, this button depresses it. So now, sticking out, when you press this button, it goes flush. When it goes flush, you are able to remove the barrels. So I said this is a later variation. 
Earlier variations have a slightly different opening and closing system than this. Also, uh, earliest guns have soldered barrels. They're not dovetailed. Um, I don't have enough space on my bench here to do this. But if I pull this out, you'd be able to see where they're dovetailed in there. Also, we have this bevel. That lip there. That lip goes into the main action. Right in there. Really helps secure it. And these barrels actually go on like significantly easier than you'd think. Just press it down. Look at that. Back on. Holy moly. So, in any case, this is a side swing opener. Fourth variation or the latest variation of it. They're a cool gun. A cool piece of American history. I enjoyed shooting it. I did all right. Dusted a bunch of clays with it. Did well on the first shot. Not so well on the second. I took it out again after that. Patterned it. Um, first barrel, or uh, sorry, the first barrel, the right side here, is very open. Second barrel is incredibly tight. Um, I don't have a way of measuring this right now because I'd have to go down and have to see what the taper is. So I'm not sure what it's choked, but by patterning it, I'm pretty sure the tighter barrel is a full or extra full, just looking at what I was shooting at 30 yards. Uh, which is probably why I was missing my second shot. But it's good to know. I'll take it out and do some more pattern tests. I've been running only brass holes and black powder through it. I might put some RSTs in it. I haven't decided yet. Um, but this is an American arms company made in Boston. George Fox, the founder. That company went out of business in 1901. They did move to Alabama towards the end. So you might have some guns that are marked Alabama that were made you're not going to see a side swing there because, again, these were only made from 1870 to 84. So they're a really cool gun. Uh, they're just one of those transitional guns in side-by-side -side history where we're trying to figure out as just sportsmen what worked best. And this was deemed not to be as effective as the side-by-sides you see today. In any case, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments, questions, leave them below. And keep these old guns alive.